In this video, I'm going to demonstrate some methods for using your existing strong units to help master subclasses on your other units. I'm going to, going to demonstrate three methods, two of which will require DLC or special content because you'll need Premium Instructor to, to boost your class proficiency gains, and one of which can be done without uh, Premium Instructor, but Premium Instructor could still help. I'm going to show the methods first, though I'll, give, I'll show a few details beforehand. Uh, but I'll go into detail on the ability setups and so on afterwards. Now I will link in the video description a video explaining how a print instructor works and also some figures for how different numbers of print instructors would change these setups. For the first setup, I only need to be on its dynamic strength. And that's going to be enough with for three units in, a, in the printing, in the printing squad to benefit from seven print instructors. Now these units themselves could also have print instructor, but it's easier not to have to spread the abilities to them as well. But you could do this on a different a different enemy strength if you had print instructor on them as well. Uh, the first two methods are going to use this 20 million stat unit. We're going to Carnage Martial Training 5. We want a strong unit. Uh, this doesn't need to be a Sage, and in fact this isn't even a particularly good option because Mass Blaster doesn't help much here. But this just needs to be a strong unit. For this first method, um, it could be just about anyone, though I'm using an X here for reasons I'll go into later, so a humanoid helps. Avoid some monsters and magic change them onto a humanoid, because magic change monsters copy the class proficiency gains of the equipped humanoid, so that lets you work on more units at once. Ideally, you'd be using my king as much as possible to work on as many units at once as possible, but uh, I'm just doing a couple here for demonstration. I'm using generic humanoids here just because I have some spare, but uh, it doesn't. It, for generics, it's better to have them be monsters and my king them onto your humanoids, and you can reincarnate them later. Now, a few things to note here. Uh, this bo these boards are weak to all elements and all weapons, uh, so ideally um, elemental attacks help here. And also, uh, the height of this map is 113 dm, this is a height measurement. Uh, that matters for one of the abilities I'm using, Hidden Valley. So I'll, ex I'll explain that more later. I want to, I want to form a bunch of team attacks, so I need to attack some adjacent enemies while adjacent to this strong unit. I can only work on these three units at once here because I can only really attack three enemies and still be next to the strong unit. Um, if I threw enemies around I could do it differently, but it's easier just to do three at a time. Killing this one last because this ends the map. Three. That mastered a bunch of subclasses. The subclasses I worked on are tied for second hardest. The hardest are, say, Parrot and Dark Knight, but those. Uh, because of a cap on class proficiency per kill, require multiple kills to master anyway. So uh, I'm only aiming to master the uh, second hardest subclasses in Mongo. Now for the next method, I need more of a boost. I'm going to use the first order squad, filled with one of pre-instructor units. I've got 16 of these units have pre-instructor, and I'm boosting these four units, but pre-instructor only boosts prennies. So 
these units have Prinny Hat to count as Prinnies. Now, the units themselves, again, could have Prinny Instructor on them, but it's easier to uh, not have to spread Prinny Instructor as much to the newer units. It's easier to just leave a bunch of permanent Prinny Instructors in the squad. Now, set it to 20 star enemy strength, that's when you need to fight stronger enemies. Now, to kill those stronger, en stronger enemies, I want a professional on my equipment. And I need to load a different set of abilities. And that is supposed to be that. So, four are going to work on three units at once. And going all the way from 8 star to 20 star. I can do a tower attack with four humanoids, and I'm going to make a change as before. Uh, it would be possible to do more humanoids at once than just the, well, the tower of five, one strong and four new. But to do that, I'd need to either have Pre Instructor on the new units themselves, I could do about five new. Or I'd have to settle for not being able to master some of the classes, uh, subclasses as easily. So, um... This lot have unmastered subclasses. I am going... Okay, so, um... Tower attacking here. Because I'm using a normal attack, there's a bit of a bug with Bushido, one of the abilities I have equipped. Um, the damage prediction doesn't think Bushido works when there are multiple enemies in your normal attack range, but it actually does, so the damage prediction's wrong here. It thinks I won't kill, I will kill. But yeah, that entire tower mastered their subclasses. Now, I had to go I had to do much stronger enemies with more boosts because towers split class proficiency. Team attacks, however, work a bit differently. The initiating unit gets full class proficiency, and the units the other units participating split it. So as long as um, so the units initiating were the uh, were the new units, so they were getting full class proficiency from it. So they didn't need as much of a boost because they weren't splitting it. Now, I'm going to change the subclasses again. I'm going to stay on 20 star enemy strength. Look, I'll still show here. This final one, instead of a 20 million unit, I'm only going to need a 10 million stat unit. And I won't need pre structures for this. Going to Carnage MT4 instead. And I'm going to use Combo Skill. Now, again, I could make a change more monsters. I'm just doing, doing a couple for demonstration. Yeah. So, Void has a Combo Skill with Goldion that hits all these at once. Now these individually are slightly weaker than the um, the lucky boards in terms of level, but um, because there are nine of them instead of just the one I'm killing each time, or this one per unit, um, I'm going to get a lot more class proficiency. So this is why I can get away with not needing um, Queen Instructor. In fact, because there are nine enemies instead of just one, that gets around the class proficiency limitation. Uh, like class proficiency per kill limitation, so it is possible to actually do Sage, Power and Dark Knight in one clear. However, without Print Instructor, and because I'm using a combo skill that splits class proficiency between the uh, participating units, I'm only going to get enough to do the second hardest subclasses in one clear. Now, uh, it's also possible to instead do something like Grand Macro Palm, which is four units, Goldion, Void, Killia, and Zorokan, but that splits it even further, so I'd really need Premium Instructor there. Now, bears are weak to f 
fire and wind, I'll come back to that later. They're also weak to swords and a bit to bows, but they strongly resist axes. So weapon type does matter here, which complicates things a bit. So I'm going to use this, and it doesn't look too hopeful, I've only got like 30% accuracy, and that's not dealing that much damage to them. But this won't work out because of the abilities I have equipped, and I'll show those later. There we go. So yeah, those, those got mastered. So, um... Because I was using a slightly stronger skill, uh, the combo skills tend to be quite strong. I was able to get away with a 10, uh, a 10 million stat unit instead of a 20 million. However, um, this can be basically any unit for the team attack method, though uh, if you want to use an X like I was using there, you want a humanoid. The tower it has to be a humanoid, but again, can be any humanoid. Combo skills have to be specific units, and a lot of the good combo skills for MT4 are DLC units. Uh, one of the ones that's not, you know, one of the ones that doesn't require DLC units the, is the Void and Goldion one, which is why I used that. So yeah, what I did here is more generically applicable. You know, it's a lot more flexible, but the what I did here with those two didn't require DLC, so it's useful to know it exists. So now I'll go into the abilities. I'll, I'll first also explain my active curry is the same one I've got brewing here. The Sunshine Rod curry, that doesn't the Sunshine Rod doesn't actually change anything for this setup. It increases your star resistance. I'm just using that because star resistance is hard to increase. Um, the important thing is, I have 100 thimbles in there for 100% crit rate, because criticals boost damage a lot. Um, doesn't even have to be thimbles. Any weapon or any item at all with a positive crit rate works. Thimbles are just cheap and the first item in the shop. So, uh, equipment wise, I had to equip a professional for the uh, harder one, the tower to kill, because professionals increase critical damage in this game, not critical hit rate. Um, critics go from one and a half times damage to two and a half times with this, except axes have a special bonus. Um, they increase your crit damage by 15%, so instead of um, 1.5 times, it's 1.65 times, or with a professional it becomes 2.65 uh, times. But yeah, crits are a massive damage source. Um, Windblade War Axe turns my attack's wind element. Uh, I showed before the lucky boards are all weak to all the elements. So this mattered for the tower attack, but for the team attacks I had to have elemental weapons on the new units. Crystal Axe, Flame Club, Windblade War Axe. Uh, these are all just... but you can buy all of them from the shop. Uh, they're easy to get. But yeah. Ice element attacks, fire element attacks... Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, Wind element attacks, fire, ice. For team attacks, the initiating unit, if they have an elemental weapon, that determines the team the team attack element. So that's why these units needed the elemental weapons on them. Otherwise, equipment is just for movement. Again, same here, equipment is for movement. Uh, just movement here again. Windblade War Axe again. Wind element attacks, ideal, because uh, bears are weak to wind. I had a sword here, which mean um, because bears are weak to them. This actually means that I couldn't make king monsters over Void's main weapon. If I was going to, I'd have to pay careful attention to who I'm making onto which slot, because my my main weapon does matter for. Um, my main weapon choice does matter for the bears, whereas my weapon choice doesn't matter for the lucky boards. Goldion, don't, uh, Goldion's stats and so on do not matter at all. Um, I could have mastered to Goldion so is doing this, but I already had him mastered. I'll also show off that 
I had the combo skill at only plus 7 just to make it cheaper, it would be more powerful at plus 9. I could have leveled it up, I didn't. It would be, it would be a lot cheaper at level 99 instead of level 1. Now, ability wise. Mass Blaster increases uh, damage the more targets you hit. I That wasn't useful because I was just doing. Um, no, I was just doing normal attacks and team attacks. Acceleration shot. The further away the target is, the more damage you deal. When I did the tower attack, I was three tiles away. So this was 45%. Bushido, more damage for attacking a single unit. I didn't use the third unique ability slot, so I could you can do this without defeating Carnage Dark. Kamikaze, common ability of Zoroken. Uh, so you can spread this via Carol World. The description's wrong, you need higher speed, not the target. Um, but yeah, if your speed is higher, you deal a lot more crit damage. Hidden Valley, this is why the height of the map mattered. Um, I think I forgot to show it for MT4, but MT4 is 112 compared to the 113 of MT5. They're both over 100. So for any map with a height of more than 100, or at least 100, that's 100% attack and speed for three slots. Which, yeah, okay, I can get more with, say, Taste of Victory, but th three slots for guaranteed 100% to two sets is kind of good. Using an axe as a main weapon, axe is attack based. Kamikaze needs to be, to be faster, this boosts speed. So, yeah, this works perfectly in much training 4 and 5. And much training in general, they're all really high up. Hawkeye says more than three panels, works at three or more. As long as you're at least three panels away, you, had, you have 100% accuracy. I was intentionally three panels away. A five-unit tower, so w one strong, four new, can attack from three away. Uh, so yeah, 100% accuracy just means this is more reliable. This isn't technically required, but you don't want to miss. Um, critical point, common ability of Petta. Critical hits deal more damage to non-adjacent enemies. Bogadry increases critical damage dealt. Desperation. So as attack, it's actually attack adjustment or attacking power. This is a semi-invisible increase to attacking sets during damage calcs. Basically, your sets are treated as being higher uh, while attacking. Downside, your it's uh, a minus 100% defense adjustment. Again, this is not literally the defense stat. This is it just treats whatever defensive stat is applicable, defense or res, as being minus 100% during damage calcs. Now. This would just mean if I get hit, I'm in trouble, but wait, I'm not getting hit, not a problem. The other ability setup I used was this. Mass Blaster again wasn't useful. Assault Attack, the further you move, the more damage you deal. Bushido, increased damage to one target. Kamikaze, as before, when you're faster than the enemy, your, your crits hurt more. Hidden Valley, uh, again, higher attack and speed at higher elevations. Then we will get along. Common ability of Sicily, spread it via Carol World. All allies on the map have a 100% team attack chance. This means I don't need to worry about doing anything with the new units to guarantee their team attack. This strong support unit will guarantee the team attacks. Critical point again from Peda, your your crits are stronger to non-adjacent targets. Uh, this does work with the team attacks because while the attackers are adjacent, uh, this unit isn't. This unit's actually uh, two tiles away, but is participating in the team attacks. Now, I'll note that not only did I not use the third, of it, third unique ability slot, I didn't use any of these common slots either. I only used the 12, so this could be done without doing Carol World for more slots. It's, and again, I also didn't need the professional when I was doing this method. Um, that's just the difference between 8-star um, eight, uh, eight enemies and 20-star. But yeah, the team attacks were giving full class proficiency to the initiating units, the tower attacks were splitting it, so I needed a lot more class proficiency for tower attacks, and hence needed to kill stronger stuff and be stronger to do it. Otherwise, yeah, Goldion's stats didn't matter, his abilities don't matter. Void, um... So, he gains revenge at the start of each uh, map. This works similarly to the revenge booster Unique Innocent, uh, didn't act to need that for this. Mass Blaster, increases damage for the more things you hit. 
Uh, for bears, this was plus 90% damage because I'm hitting nine of them. Assist. So this is slightly weirdly worded because um, it claims to boost the accuracy of uh, subsequent ally units. Um, if you are casting a skill multiple times somehow, this works on your own attacks as well. So I was attacking four times there. The first of them had shaky accuracy, but the other three were 100% accurate. And I was attacking so many times because of Never Give Up. Common ability of Asagi, turn it into a scroll via Carol World. Combo skills get performed an extra three times, so in this case four times in total. I could also... Um, this also works on, uh, on team attacks for some reason, however, lucky boards have to be one shot, so performing more team attacks like that wouldn't have really worked. But for the bears, I just had to kill them within the three hits. Like, the first one is just to guarantee the accuracy, and then the other three will hit. The other three need to be able to kill. Hidden Valley, same as before. Increase attack and speed the higher you are. And yeah, works really well on martial training maps. Because of this, I have to be careful which weapon I have as the main weapon. So, max changing onto Void is a bit awkward. It, I mainly want to magic change onto the other units participating in the combo. Because, um, yeah, I need it to be attack based or attack and speed based. And also, I don't want it to be something that bears resist. Have some empty slots. Reliable ally, common ability of Kelia, spread it via Carol World. In during combo skills, your attack adjustment, attack adjustment is increased. Um, again, weirdly phrased. Purgatory, more damage. On criticals. Okay, criticals are a big deal. Wind blessing. I had the weapon. I had a weapon to turn my attacks wind element. This makes me deal more wind damage. So yeah. Uh, so it's a short so show. Prini instructor. Prini instructor makes all Prinis in the same squad gain more experience, mana, and class proficiency. Common ability of Valva Torres. Also, I had Pretty Hat on the Unicell's Raising, but I've got Pretty Hat here as well. Common ability of Fuka, um, you count as a Prinny. Works really well with Prinny Instructor. The other way of counting as a Prinny is being, other than literally being a Prinny, is being in the Prinny Squad, which you unlock by having a level 10 Prinny. So, yeah. Uh, can, if you have more Prinny Instructor, boosts, you can do some of these on lower strength or more units at once. Um, yeah, otherwise, I hope this was helpful to you. Uh, thank you for watching.